Hi, this is uh, Vibe for IRPhoto.net and today I will be showing you conversion of the uh, Sony Nex6 for infrared sensitivity. Uh, Nex6, very nice new camera, uh, comes with the new compact 16 to 50 mil uh, lens with uh, power zoom, it's also very useful for filming. I think it's a very good choice for, uh, for infrared photography. Uh, because of the, the screen, the viewfinder, and of course the uh, very the nice uh, high quality sensor APS-C format, and um, uh, so I, like you can use the viewfinder in bright light when um, uh, your lens is, for example, blocked by an opaque IR filter and you cannot see through it uh, by yourself. So it has a benefit above uh, DSLR. Uh, with an optical finder that you can al always see uh, the result you want to get um, in the wavelengths you have a filter for at that moment. So this conversion will be a, a full spectrum conversion um, where the camera will be sensitive for both normal and infrared light and we can use filters in front of the lens uh, to juice whatever spectrum you want to have. I have the table sort of prepared here, it's nice and clean. I took uh, all of the loose parts of my camera and um, I have this sheet here um, with this like strip of sticky tape uh, where I can paste all of the uh, screws on and keep track of them, make notes and uh, make sure we will be able to put it all back together. Um, it is an expensive camera, I don't really want to wreck it, but I uh, feel fairly confident uh, that we can do the conversion. But especially if you do this for a first time, make sure you have uh, a good quiet environment, a nice clean table, and you keep all of your children, animals, or women away so you won't be disturbed in any way. So here I am sort of checking out the camera for a bit and preparing my workspace, um, making some drawings on the paper sheet I have and make sure I, I will be able to find all of the screws back and know what I'm doing which is not really always the case. So now we're really starting the conversion. I'm here peeling up the rubber bit that's to hold on to. It's already loose for a bit because there is a screw beneath it there and further there's two screws in the bottom, two screws on the left side, one in the uh, at two sockets and there is two other screws uh, at the strobe and further on there is three screws that sit in the battery compartment one right at the door and two further in the bottom of the compartment. So here I'll be taking out all of it. Some things might look a little different because I was still finding out how everything worked but in the end um, we got everything taken apart. So we finally found the two missing screws. Um, in the very bottom of the battery compartment there were two screws that were holding on this top and once these were released um, it, it, it got the top off and it's then still connected using two uh, little ribbon cables one uh, for the button here and, and one for the strobe so we'll, we'll go and very carefully try and pull those out. They usually have some some little tabs on them to um, uh, to be able to to pull them pull them free. And uh, it, it will, I'm gonna be careful with it because this little ribbons they they are quite uh, sensitive and they they hear especially this ones are. They are also again connected to uh, not to a solid bit of the camera, but to a a little socket that's mounted on another 
rebel cable, and there is some high powers in this camera, especially when you get near the strobes, um, and you can shock yourself uh, fairly well. Uh, it's very dangerous, especially um, the like things that are connected to the to the strobe may have very high voltages, and. Um, I'm not sure what I did there, but I, I, I did shock myself for, for, for quite a bit. Um, so here, the one, the one here at the, at the strobe is so even more sensitive. And you definitely, there's a little hole in it that you can kind of use to, to get the, the ribbon cable out. But uh, definitely want to kind of stay away with your like your fingers from, from the electrical components here because um, some of them, yeah, especially strobe has a uh, has a condensator that still holds uh, holds power and um, it does hurt for a bit. Here we have the top off. It's great. And now we can go ahead. We already uh, removed all these other um, screws just and then we can sort of pull off the whole back here. So now we have this loose end we'll have to uh, to get the camera some a bit further apart and there is this whole series of pink screws. Uh, there is two here at the bottom of the uh, tripod socket and I, I already took out some. Uh, there is one here just at the uh, left side of the camera, there is two uh, at the strobe, and there is two other ones at the right side of the camera. So um, now we're going to take the camera apart. What you don't see yet in this movie is um, the plastic back cover. Um, it's a little easier to remove it just by fumbling it over the screen. I thought it was impossible, but it is. And apart from the pink screws I just showed, there is two other screws that need to be taken out. One on the left side, it's a black one that's very near the connector for the strap. And there is a silver screw that's sort of in the middle of... Um, the right side on the back, just below the uh, the main sort of dial, and you can also take out the dial, and the whole unit that's connected to it is like blue. It has a little ribbon cable, and it clips in place. Um, you just push it up for a bit, and then it comes out, and you get access to the little silver screw. So in total. There is, I think, seven of these pink screws, a silver one, and a black screw. And once these are loose, you can take off the whole unit, sort of a chassis with the screen attached. And uh, that's then still attached with one ribbon cable that can be easily pulled out of its socket uh, after flipping up like the little... Uh, hinged uh, locking tab and uh, uh, then it should be very easy to remove it and uh... okay now we have released uh, back and we're um, at the main circuit board and it has a lot of these uh, ribbon cables here that all need to be disconnected and there are some different kinds to it some have a little uh, black tab like these ones and that needs to be pried up first uh, to uh, enable to to get them loose they're they're the easiest kind actually because you just release the tab and then they uh, the little thing will come out very easily there is also this plastic screen on it I, I think I will just go ahead it's sort of a protective screen but it might hide quite a bit of the, uh, I don't know, uh, screws we have here, 
and I, I have this uh, chopstick. I made it into a little tip so I can use that instead of my pliers or my um, tweezers to, to get all of the things out. In total, there is uh, three ribbon cables on the top, three on the right side, two on the bottom, and one that threads through the middle on the sort of left side, and they all need to be released. And after that, the circuit board is held in place by a plastic unit that also holds the little microphone and the battery door and the microphone is attached to or it's not a microphone I think it's a speaker is attached to the circuit board with the little red and black cables at the bottom right side so that has one black screw if you release it uh, the battery door and this whole plastic unit should come out and you can also get the speaker out of it and then there is three screws holding the circuit board in place, uh, two black ones, one at the bottom right side, one at the left side, and a silver one that's sort of on the top right. And especially the two black ones are a little harder to get out, uh, so be, be careful with those so you don't strip the heads. And once you get those screws out, you can sort of lift up the circuit board, which is then still connects it with one ribbon cable that's just a pull-out type on the back. That's the cable that goes to the dust shaker. So in this conversion, it's not replaced uh, when putting the camera back together again. And then there is a white cable, I think it's the Wi-Fi antenna, that remains connected. So you have to sort of set the circuit board aside for a bit and we can only get the um, Wi-Fi antenna loose after the next step where we remove a uh, black plastic frame because it is a, the Wi-Fi part isn't attached to the front of the camera and you cannot get to a screw. Uh, so be very careful with this uh, little white cable. Don't pull it out uh, or damage your camera because you might lose your uh, Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, so that took a whole lot of fumbling and now we got this frame out and we really can access the thing. Here, this white thing you see there is the capacitor for, for, the, um, for the strobe, I think. Um, don't touch any of that with metal, it's, it has very high power, uh, so there's especially the two points on the top. There is two little mic, stereo microphones um, that need to be taken out of their sockets here, and, um, and then there's all these ribbon bits that, that sort of go around and over it, uh, makes it fairly difficult to get it out. And then this the little white cable here. You cannot really see it, but I'll take it out for a moment. It is connected to some tiny part here in the front of the camera, and I assume that will be maybe like the Wi Fi antenna or something. Okay, we're almost there. Um, circuit board is out and we're left with the two last steps. There is a last bit of metal chassis in the camera that is held down by four screws, two on the right side and two sort of on the top side. You just take those out and then that part should come out. And after that there is three screws holding down the sensor. Um, there is one on the bottom right one sort of on the top and one on the uh, top left and um, they also have some shims underneath them uh, that seat the sensor in the exact right position and pitch and stuff in the camera and you really want to like keep those in place and, and not lose them and 
well, just remove the screws and take the sensor out. So that's, uh, we're, we're golden, basically. So here we see the sensor out. It is uh, a very nice unit, and the filter we are wanting to take out is just held in place by a sort of a black metal frame. It's, it's sort of springy and has a, just release it, and then it should come off. In this conversion, we just remove the whole unit and do not replace it with a filter, uh, so we get full spectrum sensitivity. And with these kind of cameras, you don't really need to replace the filter with an equal thickness glass because the all of the focus is done on the main sensor, and removing glass will also not influence the infinity focus. It might just decrease the short focus a bit, and it's quite of a bit. Um, of an advantage over SLR cameras where you always have to uh, replace the glass uh, to keep the optical path the exact same um, as with the focusing screen and the autofocus sensor in order to focus accurately. So now the filter is off, we have replaced the gasket or like sort of the plastic frame and the, and the black metal frame and just place the sensor back in the camera and put the whole thing back together again. Um, that will be quite a lot of work and I'll be not showing it, it's just the reverse order. Um, but I can tell you it worked for me, I got the whole camera back together again and um, it, it is uh, a very nice uh, infrared tool now. So uh, thanks for watching, there is some more explanation and photos on my website ir-photo.net and um, uh, some like a whole tutorial uh, detailed pictures and also conversion instructions for other cameras that I have done before.